All right, guys. So we're out here with the uh, the protege for uh, 2020 uh, Science Olympiad Elastic Launch Glider rules. Um, I have not done any trimming since the uh, since we're, where we showed these in the build videos, and so we're going to start with the conventional protege. And I will show you uh, just a. There we go. So this is the rubber and the catapult from the kit. So every kit includes this type of a catapult. That way, those of you that um, prefer this type of catapult, or, you know, the, the kit comes ready to go by itself, basically, is what I'm getting at. So, that is a remarkably nice launch right off the bat. Alright. It's not working, Mommy. So a couple things. Let me get over closer. So a couple things. Uh, one is the launch looked really nice, so there's not a whole lot more we're going to have to do. And when you follow that trimming process that we show, uh, where where you launch the airplane horizontally uh, to get started, that zeroes you in pretty closely. And these airplanes uh, are light enough that the flight dynamics are really, really forgiving on a lot of them. Um, as compared to last year's rules, the airplanes were a little heavier, less forgiving. Um, so we are out here using the JNA Aerospace Deluxe Launcher. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the airplane using the, you know, the ultimate in elastic launch glider technology. And so what we'll do is we'll set this up here. That's probably too much bank angle. We'll drop it back a little. Okay, that was the correct amount of bank angle I had set before. So we were, that was 20. We're going to go to 35. Okay, so. That's about as good as you can ever ask for right there. Except that it landed in a tree. Okay, so we've got this airplane flying very well. A um, couple things to note. Uh, it's circling a little wide, so you might would want to add some rudder. Now when you do that, the airplane's going to roll harder. Uh, the other thing is we're not launching particularly high. We're, I've set this up for about you know 18 to 20 foot launches for this tension. Um, as you change that that tension, you're gonna have to change your pitch and roll angles. Uh, go back to our Super Protege trimming video to see some examples of that. Hopefully, we'll get some more of that information out as time goes on. Um, but basically, that's you know this is this airplane fly, flew right off the board. Um, the previous one, uh, the, the the previous one of this year's model, uh, did the same. So as long as you build it nice and straight, it's going to be fairly straightforward to trim. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy because these are indoor gliders and um, they do have their quirks to them. Um, but as you can see, it flies very very beautifully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the canard and we'll walk through the process. <laughs> All right, so for the canard, I want to point out a couple of things. One is, if I haven't mentioned it in the build video, we moved the uh, standoff up here in front of the tail. Um, I originally was setting these up on the tail, and you can't put them there because over time they start to break off. So I've moved it up ahead, uh, thanks to more testing we've done. So we'll give this a test glide just to review where we were. And it's flying a little bit nose down. It is turning a little bit, um, so we're more or less okay on the left turn. Now, um, I have already attempted to fly this off the catapult, so I know what is coming. You guys are going to be in shock when it happens, though. So, this is going to be, what you're about to see the, is the primary pitfall with yeah, these canards, and not all of them do it exactly the same. So, 
Oh, it didn't do it this time. Brilliant, you evil thing. Okay, so what, what I wanted to point out is um, the other night when I was flying this exact model, I have made a few tweaks since I flew it first. Um, I was launching it and it was showing good stability from a hand launch, a hard hand launch, but when I was launching it was catching on the end of the rubber band and coming around and I finally figured out what was happening is that the airplane was not lifting as it was coming up this launcher. So the trick in that scenario, if you've already got some uh, the, the trailing edge of the canard itself bent down, this is going to flex up as your speed builds. So in that scenario, you'll want to bend. See how I'm bending the lead, twisting the leading edge right here? So the actual wood part provides some lift. Aerodynamically, that's not great, but it works. So I'll load this guy back on the launcher here. Sorry, put the knot up towards the front, guys, like a smart person would do. There we go. Now, one thing that I recommend is get your hand out of the way here so that in the event that this airplane does release prematurely, because this does happen, um, your hand's not there to damage the airplane as it goes up. All right, so again, we don't really know what it's going to do here. Ah, we got a demo of the, the bad behavior. All right, we'll give it yet a touch more. So this is a quirk of the canard design. Um, it's something you're going to have to experimentally work out how to make it, how to make that tendency go away. Um, my other one never does it, so go figure. Ah, it did it twice. Yeah, I don't know why it wasn't doing it before. I'm going to continue adding some up here to try to pull it off there. I think I may know, there may be something else going on here, but we'll find out here in a minute. There we go, much better. All right, and as you can see, we've got a very nice glide going with it. That wasn't a whole lot of launch height. I did have to, you know, as you saw there, I added a lot of incidents to get this going. Um, canards tend to like that. That also limits how high you can launch them. And if you want to see an extreme case of why strange configurations limit your launch height, watch the upcoming uh, trimming video for a one-sheet flying wing, and you'll see that that, that to its logical conclusion. All right, so as you saw, the airplane, oop. In case you can't tell, I'm still recovering this area from a storm that came through and damaged some stuff, so. Um, anyway, if you notice, the airplane flipped inverted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce my bank angle on launch and see if I can compensate for that that way because I like the turning radius of the airplane and I don't wanna change my uh, rudder s setting if I can avoid it. Oh, you're going to do that again. Bill Gowan used to have a lot of trouble with this, and I did too on conventional models. So, hopefully we'll be able to get some research done on specifically eliminating that behavior. There we go. Real nice, pretty glide there. Just oh, that just barely missed. All right, so we're gliding a little bit nose low. Um, I'm going to try adding some more camber to my flaps, or sorry, to my canard to fix that. Because I really don't. I've, if you notice my. Um, 
trailing edges of my wings have assumed a little bit of uh, camber here. They're drooped down slightly, and that's good. That makes the wing more efficient. I don't want to do away with that if I can avoid it. So. The reason I don't want to get rid of that is it does improve the lift to drag ratio of that uh, wing section. So, there we go. And so we'll launch about the same angle. Very little bank. And real nice glide. I may have, okay, so I went a little overkill. All right, we're going to do an experiment here on video because this gives, since this airplane's over elevated, um, this gives me an opportunity to try something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deflect my flaps down a little bit more and see if we can get the airplane to fly even better that way. So let's give it a test glide real quick. There's a little nose down there. And this is why, kids, that you move your hands, is so you don't break your airplanes, just like Mr. Josh did. It does not like that. So, take the camera back out of the wing. And since we said we had a little bit too much up trim here, take some of that out. Wow, something changed a little bit there. Might have something to do with all that warping and twisting I was doing. So... I'm gonna do, I'm doing several adjustments here. So I twisted the wing a little bit to reduce this and uh, the, the right roll. Also took out some more incidents to mitigate some of the stalling in the glide. Okay. Still pulling around pretty hard there. Um, but everything looked fairly stable, so I'm going to just change my bank angle on launch. Alright, I'm going to take out some of the rudder trim I've got. Try to twist this wing just a smidge more. There we go. Much better. All right, so we'll try throw us. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can put a stopwatch on this while I'm flying it, just so we can see if we can, if I get a clean launch, we'll see if we can find out how long it flies. Or not. And that was a terrible launch. I did not use enough bank on launch, and that's what happened. 
still. That was 11 seconds. Alright, so as you can see with the canard, it does take a lot of experimentation to figure out the proper flight trim. Um, as I've mentioned, you know, there are a few people I've talked to who say they have tried canard gliders in the past. I don't think any of them have tried flappers. So this is kind of new uh, research for uh, all of us. And that was not a particularly high launch there. That was maybe 15 feet. Um, so let's see what this gives us. And do, 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 do. All right, so that was about uh, 12 seconds. That was over 12 seconds. Um, and that's from a 15 foot launch or so. Um, so with the canards, please, actually, you guys, please provide some feedback if you're, if you build this airplane as a canard. Let us know what you think. Um, I think it's worth experimenting with. I've gotten some, uh, some really good flight times out of these. Um, so it's just something, something interesting to play around with and, and see what you think. And just to go back to this guy, let's see what kind of flight times we're getting on this. Maybe we'll have to try again. That was 18 seconds. Alright guys, this has been the uh, trimming video for the Protégé from j &H Aerospace for the 2020 Science Olympiad season. Questions, comments, please put them in the comments section below. If you find out any trimming uh, techniques that are different from ours that, that work better for you, please, uh, please keep us posted on those and let us know how they work out for you. We'll see you at the competitions. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.